Hello students, how are you all? Hope all of you are studying properly at home. Today, I am going to start the explanation of the chapter Electricity. Before learning about electricity in details, we need to know a little bit about chemistry also. Here, you can see the diagram of an atom and the constituents of an atom. That means, what are the things that are present inside an atom. The things that are marked plus here are protons. They are marked plus because they have positive charges. These are electrons which move around the orbit and they contain negative charges. And these green ones are the neutrons. They are neutral. That means they do not contain any charges. In the previous diagram, you have seen protons are marked plus and electrons are marked minus. So what are these? These are charges. That means the proton contains positive charges and the electron contains negative charges. If the number of protons and electrons are not equal, we get a charged body. When an object contains unequal number of protons and electrons, it is said to be charged. If the number of electrons are more, the object becomes negatively charged since electrons have negative charges. And the object is said to be positively charged if the number of protons is more than the number of electrons. Charges are denoted by Q and its SI unit is coulombs which is denoted by C. Whether a body is charged or not can be detected with the help of a device called electroscope. It contains a metal, a cork, copper wire and aluminium foil. If we place a charged body here, we will see a deflection in the aluminium foil which will tell us whether the body is charged or not. Now, what is electricity? Electricity is a form of energy that can easily be changed into many other forms. By many other forms, I mean to say that it can be used in operating a lot of machineries. You can see a diagram in front of you which tells you that electricity can be used in order to generate motion, in order to generate light, in order to communicate and in order to create heating and cooling effects also. In one word, electricity can be used in order to operate all the different types of machineries that we use nowadays. Actually, electricity is defined as the flow of electrons. You people have already learned about electrons. So whenever the electron flows in a circuit, we say that electricity is flowing in a circuit. Electricity is defined as a rate of flow of electricity through a conductor. Electricity is denoted by I, capital I here. And we already know what is Q. Q means charges. So I equal to Q by T, where I stands for current. It is a scalar quantity since it does not have any direction associated with it. Electricity always moves in the direction of the conductor. That means if I put the conductor, however I put the conductor, electricity will flow through the conductor. It doesn't have any direction of its own. Its SI unit is Coulomb per second, Q by T. Coulomb is the unit of charge and second is the unit of time. So Coulomb per second gives us ampere. Ampere is denoted by A. It is measured by a device called ammeter. Later on, I will show you what an ammeter is, how it is connected to a circuit and how readings are taken with the help of an ammeter. 
the direction of electricity is always taken in the opposite direct opposite to the direction of the flow of electrons that means you can see the diagram here if the electrons are moving from right to left the direction of current is taken to be from left to right now we are going to learn about electric circuits one of the most important parts of this chapter why this is considered to be important since electricity is unable to flow in the absence of a circuit electricity cannot flow without a circuit and the circuit had to be closed that means the switch had to be on or connected in order to in order for electricity to flow from one place to another see this is the switch we can see the switch here as soon as it is turned on energy from this battery will flow through here as you can see the arrow here through the resistor into the bulb and the bulb will glow this red wire is known as the live wire why because it carries the energy from the battery to the bulb this black wire is called the neutral wire its work is to complete the circuit if the circuit is not complete or closed electricity won't be able to flow through it and this is the diagrammatic representation of a real life circuit resistors are shown like this bulbs are shown like this this is the switch and this is the battery the longer heads of the battery represents the positive side and the shorter head represents the negative side these individuals are the cells and their combination is known as a battery so this is how we need to draw electric circuits and we should make sure that there is no gaps in the circuit if there is a gap that means the circuit is open and electricity won't be able to flow through it now we are going to learn about the difference between conductors and insulators why do we need to learn about conductors and insulators conductors are mainly required to make electric circuits and insulators prevent us from getting an electric shock let us see in the conductor part it is written these are substances that have a property to conduct electricity through them that means conductors are substances which allows electricity to pass through them insulators are just the opposite that means they do not allow the electricity to pass through them why conductors allow electricity to pass through them because they have loosely held electrons which are responsible for the flow of electricity we have already learned that flowing of electrons gives us electricity so conductors have free electrons which can easily move and helps in the movement of electricity insulators on the other hand they do not have free electrons and thus obstruct the flow of electricity an example of conductor is copper with which most of our electrical wirings are made and an insulator is a rubber insulation which is put above the copper wire so that if we touch the copper wire by mistake we do not get an electric shock this is the end of today's video hope all of you have understood the explained topics you can pause the video whenever required to see what is written in the slides i'll be back again next week with the explanation of few more topics from the chapter until then take care and stay safe